Amen. Good morning. There are a few announcements, uh, and they can be found in the back of the bulletin. But apparently, they're after the post lead. Uh, so just be mindful that the uh, choir is coming back soon. We're all looking forward to that. I know. And the, there is a lunch bunch that is meeting on August 18th. Are there any announcements for the good of the whole? The grace and peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you. Whether you're worshiping here or worshiping with us online, we're so blessed to have you here. I hear that the thin crowd is because this is the last Sunday before school starts back up. I don't know if that's true or not, but you know, I'm thrown for a loop, as they say. So uh, I hope that the people are uh, worshiping with us online and, uh, and, if n and safe and safe travels and their return uh, to worship with us here. I'm trying to give some time for these stragglers that are out there in the lobby. I'm not really good in filling in the space, but it is a pleasure to be worshiping with you. Please, please make sure, thank you, please make sure to sign the friendship pads and pass them down so that we know that you've been with us here today in worship uh, and uh, we can get in contact with you. Also, uh, the Stevens ministers are always available after worship. Uh, Stevens ministry here is a uh, wonderful ministry of this church uh, where we have confidential listeners who can hear uh, and, and listen and pray with you. Um, as you. As we all face challenges in life, it's always nice to have somebody who we know that we can talk to and have confidence that, uh, that we're being cared for and prayed for. Are there any other announcements? Let us worship God. Good morning. Turn your hearts to God. What shall we do when we are worried? Place your trust in God's love and mercy. What shall we do when weary, crowded, and busy? Take time for the refreshing words of God's love for you. Open our hearts, O Lord, and make us ready for your words to us. Amen.
Friends in Christ, we've been called to love God with all our heart, mind, body, and soul, and to love our neighbor as ourselves, but our lives are constricted and self-consumed. We have failed to love God, neighbor, and ourselves as we should. Let us make the good confession before God and each other, confessing all that separates us from the love of God and love of neighbor. Merciful God, you have commanded us to love you as our ultimate concern. You have called us to love others as you love them. But we are personally and socially deformed by the love of other gods, the false gods of prosperity, materialism, of racial and ethnic privilege, of gender exclusivity, and of nationalistic imperialism. Forgive us our sins and transform us by your spirit that we might learn to love as you love and to live as people who have been baptized as your own children. Amen. Friends, hear the good news. Christ came for us and showed us a way. He lived for us. He died for us. He rose for us. He reigns in power for us. He prays for us. With such a strong advocate at God's right hand, we can be assured that in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. As people forgiven and restored, we greet each other with signs of Christ's peace. The peace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ be with you. Let's take some time to greet each other with signs of Christ's peace. Almighty God, in you are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Open our eyes that we may see the wonders of your word and give us grace that we may clearly understand and freely choose the way of your wisdom. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the book of Ephesians. I will be reading Ephesians chapter three, verses 14 through 21. I invite you all to look, follow along with me using the words printed in your bulletin. Let us listen for God's word to us this morning. <clears throat> for this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I, <clears throat> excuse me, I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. God's word for God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our gospel reading today comes to us from the Gospel of John in the 6th chapter, verses 1 through 21. Listen to what God is saying to the church today. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When he looked up and saw a large crowd coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for all these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not, be enough, would not buy enough bread for each of them to get even a little. 
One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish, but what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make them sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, and also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told his disciples, gather up the fragments left over, so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled 12 baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who has come into the world. When Jesus realized that they were about to come and take him by force to make him a king, he withdrew again to the mountain by himself. When evening came, his disciples went down to the lake, got into a boat, and started across the lake to Capernaum. It was now dark, and Jesus had not yet come to them. The lake became rough because of the strong wind that was blowing. When they had rowed about three or four miles out, they saw Jesus walking on the lake and coming near the boat, and they were terrified. But he said to them, It is I. Do not be afraid. Then they wanted to take him into the boat, and immediately the boat reached the land towards which they were going. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior. So it's interesting because Heidi has a much better understanding of the lectionary sometimes than I do. I'm I'm telling tales out of school here, Heidi. I hope I don't embarrass you. When, uh, When we were doing the music and talking about what was coming up, she said, oh, no, six weeks of John 6. I think it's only five. But uh, six weeks of John 6, six weeks of Jesus is the bread, the physical bread that nourishes our body, the spiritual bread that nourishes our soul. John doesn't have this Eucharistic uh, story. John has John 6. There's no words of institution and breaking of the breads in the upper room with the disciples that we're so familiar with when we have communion. We'll have it next week. So come back and see how it's done. But but what we have is six weeks of how Jesus is the bread of life. The bread that nourishes our bodies, make sure that we're fed, the bread that nourishes our souls, so make sure that we're ready for the spiritual journey that lies ahead. I'm going to try not to preach too much on the bread because I've got five weeks of it coming up. And I don't want to use all my good stuff in the first week. And then next week, I've got nothing to say. Amen? When I was a kid growing up, we lived in South Miami, Florida. I'm going to talk a little bit about bread, so I just lied to you. South Miami, Florida was where the Flowers Bakery was on US-1. A huge flowers bakery. I think they, they paved paradise and put up a, a parking lot. It's now a, a mall with movie theaters and bars and everything like that. But when I was a kid growing up, the flowers bakery would crank up. And all of South Miami, for miles, would smell like fresh baked bread. Can you imagine? I mean, we always hear stories about people who live near paper mills, right? how the whole town stunk. We lived in a place where the whole town smelled like fresh baked bread. I mean, it was amazing. And I think about how Jesus' grace and Jesus' love must have been like that smell of fresh baked bread, how the people who were around would just get a whiff that Jesus was in town and they'd come running to see what was happening. They'd follow their nose to Jesus. I was uh, a friend of mine. I also also thought about this friend of mine who was telling me, I I used to grade seminary uh, exams. You know, they asked for pastors to volunteer to grade these exams. And you could always tell uh, when an exam came from uh, San Francisco. Can you guess why? 
because it had a reference to sourdough bread. You'd think that sourdough bread was the greatest bread on the planet, the way they talk about it. I mean, you couldn't get out of a, a sermon, you know, or exegesis without hearing about sourdough bread, and you knew that person had to be from California. So the type of bread that we are, right, people can recognize that, that bread, and people recognized Jesus as this bread of life, uh, no matter whether they came from South Miami or San Francisco, uh, that, that smell uh, let people know that Jesus was in town and that good things were happening. Jesus, uh, Jesus comes to this place, and the first thing he does is he recognizes that the people need a shepherd. And the reason I say that is because when he saw the people, he said, I want them to sit down on these grassy fields. He makes them lie down in green pastures. And he restores their souls. There's this tie to Psalm 23 right there in the text. Jesus takes this position of seating on the mountain. We know that the mountain is a place where people come in contact with God. So we have all this imagery that's taking place as Jesus is doing is doing his teaching. He's tying it in to the history of Israel. The people are brought to this mountain. They're set down on the grass and they are fed. Their cup runneth over. There was so much bread being broken that there was more than enough. Ties back into 2 Kings 4 where Elisha receives this gift of 20 loaves of barley bread which is what the poor people ate. They didn't eat wheat bread, they ate barley bread. Elisha, the prophet, receives this gift as a, a, as a gift of first fruits given to God and says, go feed the people. How are we going to feed all these people with 20 loaves of bread? How are we going to feed all these people with, with five loaves of bread and two fish? How are we going to do it? And, I, and I, the other thing that's kind of stirring with me in all of this is that the, the fact that in John's gospel, these aren't miracles. You know, we like to think of miracles as something miraculously happening that's beyond human explanation. John doesn't want us to think that way. John is pointing to Christ, and John says, these are signs of what God is doing. Signs. Not miracles. These are signs that are pointing to Jesus Christ. The bread of heaven. The I am. The, the disciples in the boat are terrified. What does Jesus say? Don't be afraid. I am that's really what he's saying. Don't be afraid, I am. See, this gospel, Jesus knows who Jesus is, and Jesus knows what Jesus is about. And it's everybody else who gets it wrong. And I, I sometimes wonder if we don't get it wrong, right? We want Jesus to be what we want Jesus to be, not who Jesus is. The people saw the things that he was doing, the healing, the teaching, this, this miraculous uh, sign that God was in their midst, that Jesus was indeed a prophet of God. And what did they want to do? They wanted him to stop all that and become a king. They wanted to snatch him up and become a king. And Jesus' reaction to that is to run away. Because that's not who Jesus is, not in that way, not in the way that the people want him to be a king. He is the king in the way that God wants him to be the king. The other passage for today was, uh, I was telling the Sunday school class, was David and Bathsheba. We know that story, right? The kinds of kings that the people of Israel had had, had we're not, we're not the kind of king that Jesus was. These kings were flawed. 
power, lust. All of the things that they desired. Their warring nature. These are not the things that Jesus is, the Prince of Peace. But the people desire power, prestige, wealth, uh, someone who can violently assert Israel's dominance. They're looking for that kind of king. But that's not the king that God sends. God sends Christ, who nourishes our souls, who nourishes our body with the bread of life. As the disciples kind of get out of that space, as they come to seize Jesus, the disciples kind of abandon Jesus, get in the boat and hop out, get in the middle of the lake, right? Can you picture this? Can you picture that Jesus' disciples, the ones who are supposed to be his buddies and supporting him, as soon as things start getting a little bit hairy, they just run off? How many of y'all have ever, okay, I'll, I'll put it into terms you can understand. How many of y'all have ever been on a habitat build and somebody says, okay, we need somebody to get up on that scaffolding and cough the third floor? How quick everybody around you runs off, right, Tom? It ain't good. I'm, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed that we had people run off on you. They get out there in the middle of the lake. And again, this is, uh, you know, the feeding of the 5,000 is in all the synoptic gospels. And the story of Jesus walking on the water is in all of the synoptic gospels and in and, and John as well. The Eucharist is not in John. There's a lot of interesting things that the, the, the gospel writers want to share with us. Here we have the disciples are, are kind of getting away from Jesus. Uh, and, and Jesus comes out to where they are. Remember I told you earlier about how the people wanted Jesus to be their king and he fled? Uh, it's funny because in this, in this text where they're out on the water and uh, Jesus is walking out to them, they wanted to get Jesus onto the boat. We want to get Jesus onto our side. We want to get Jesus to do the things that we're doing instead of doing the things that Jesus needs to be about. Instead of us doing the things that Jesus is about, we want to get Jesus to do what we're doing. Am I making that? You know, sometimes we want to project on Jesus the things that we want to see happen. And then who, who, who's God then? And as soon as those disciples say, to Jesus, come on, get on the boat. They're already where they needed to be. Jesus, you see, knows who he is and knows what he is about. And the people aren't going to tell him. And his disciples aren't going to tell him. He's going to show them through his life. And, and with the hope that somehow, if they're around long enough, they will see the sign. And begin to understand what it means to be king of kings and lord of lords. Amen? I want to talk a little bit in closing about some signs that I see. And I don't, I don't want to say miracles. I want to say some signs. I'm going to talk about that habitat build that we had this weekend. Where people from the church helped build a house let us build a house where love may dwell. Is that how that song goes? Yeah, something like that. We'll build a house where love dwells with habitat. And when hands of Christ, we're going we're to help build a place where people get fed. And this Project 686 and International, help me somebody with the name of that. Positive Impact International. I'm still stuck on 686. I've got to shift over. This church has made a commitment through our mission to support a house for foster kids. Some of you may not know this. I'm, I'm sharing this with you because I think it's a sign that God is at work in this church. We made a commitment for six months, and we're going to make a commitment for the full year for a house where foster kids that are 
having some struggles getting placed can get placed and there's a loving family that watches over them and we're going we're gonna to make sure that those kids are fed and housed and sheltered and nurtured in love and we enable that to happen these are signs and you know what happens in the gospel when when the people who are out wandering around hear about Jesus when they hear about these signs when they smell that bread cooking can you smell what the rock is talking about when they smell that bread cooking they want to know where is that bakery And I hope that as you hear about the signs that are taking place here, you get curious and want to find out. Because I'll tell you this, there's enough bread to feed all y'all. And that bread that we, we, we physically hand out at Hands of Christ is nothing compared to the spiritual bread that nourishes us when we make connections with our neighbors. It's nothing. It's that spiritual bread that takes place that feeds us all. Don't get confused, people. When I hand somebody a piece of bread because they're hungry, we're both getting fed. The community is being fed. Our world is being fed. We're making a sign and pointing to the one who calls us into relationship with one another, to love and to care for each other in physical and tangible ways that overflow out into the world. Do you hear me? This is the good news of the gospel. We're not bringing Christ to anybody. Christ is there waiting on us. And inviting us to come and see. And to taste and to eat. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. trust in God whom Jesus called Abba Father and sovereign love God created the world and makes everyone equally in God's image male and female of every race and people to live as one community but we rebel against God we hide from our creator ignoring God's commandments we violate the image of God in others and ourselves accept lies as truth, exploit nature, and threaten death to the planet entrusted to our care. We deserve God's condemnation, yet God acts with justice and mercy to redeem creation. Loving us still, God makes us heirs with Christ of the covenant. 
like a mother who will not forsake her nursing child, like a father who runs to welcome a prodigal home. God is faithful still. Friends in Christ, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. God has given us life and the resources for it, so let us give in return. O God, may these gifts be used as a witness to your love, peace, and justice at work in the world, renewing the face of the earth. Amen. Please be seated. We pray for the church, for our community, for the world around us, for all those in need, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in your mercy. Uh, uh, Debbie Doverspike's grandson or granddaughter uh, had a respiratory issue and stopped breathing. Uh, went to Scottish Rite. Uh, the, the grandchild's doing much better now. Uh, but Debbie's not here because she's taking a CPR class. And so Alice Ann sent that to me, uh, letting us know. So let's pray for Debbie and her family. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. For Sarah. 
Lord, in your mercy. For our nation. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Positive impact. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, in your mercy. For all those who are traveling. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we have lifted up the names and the people and the gatherings that are on our heart. We lift them up together to you. And we know, Lord, that there is some things that we just can't wrap our minds around, much less put words to. We know that your Holy Spirit goes to the places we can't and prays the, the prayers that we don't have words for. So we lift up those prayers to you as well. The prayers that we have spoken and the prayers that our lips tremble to name. And we know that in your infinite love, you hear our prayers. So we trust in your love and we trust in your mercy. But most of all, O oh Lord, we trust in your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ the one who points us to you, the one who nourishes our bodies and souls for the journey ahead, the one who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts. We forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
lest our feet stray from the places, our God, where we met thee. Lest our hearts drunk with the wine of the world, we forget thee. Shadowed beneath thy hand, may we forever stand, true to our God, true to our native land. Friends, the true bread is Jesus Christ. Don't be drunk with this world's wine, but eat the bread that nourishes and never runs out. And go out into the world with that bread basket overflowing and share all that you have in the name of Jesus Christ. And as you go, may the blessing of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit rest on each and every one of you this day and all the days to come. Amen.